The phenomenon of post-infectious irritable bowel syndrome following acute gastroenteritis is well described. Whether or not acute gastroenteritis can also trigger symptoms compatible with functional dyspepsia is less clear. There have been several previous studies that have examined this issue, but all of these have limitations, including small sample size, leading to insufficient power to detect a difference in the prevalence of dyspepsia between exposed and non-exposed individuals, relatively short duration of follow-up, and lack of a control group. We had the ideal opportunity to examine whether or not acute gastroenteritis can trigger symptoms of dyspepsia in a cohort of individuals from the town of Walkerton in Ontario, Canada, some of whom were exposed to acute bacterial dysentery in May 2000 and who were subsequently enrolled in the Walkerton Health Study. This was a cohort study following up individuals at eight years, some of whom were exposed and others who had not been exposed to acute gastroenteritis. We asked these individuals to complete a short self-administered dyspepsia questionnaire which had been previously validated. We compared the prevalence of dyspepsia at eight years between 706 exposed individuals and 382 non-exposed subjects. We performed logistic regression to identify independent predictors of dyspepsia at eight years. The prevalence of dyspepsia at eight years using the Rome 2 criteria to define its presence was 30% in exposed subjects compared to 15% in non-exposed individuals, giving an odds ratio of 2.3. Dyspepsia was more likely to develop in females, current or previous smokers, those with pre-morbid irritable bowel syndrome or pre-morbid anxiety or depression, and those who had experienced abdominal cramps during the acute illness. This study demonstrated a significantly higher prevalence of dyspepsia at eight years in individuals exposed to acute gastroenteritis compared with those who were not exposed, suggesting that acute enteric infections have the ability to trigger upper as well as lower gastrointestinal symptoms with long-lasting consequences.